Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed on the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-up spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Burke Brown. I am your spiritual impact trainer. Welcome to my spiritual fitness class. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're already a part of the sit-ups, welcome back. Listen, we are continuing our study so that we can grow, change, progress, so that we are impacted by the word and we can impact the world. We are talking about foundation and building. And we have been in the midst of a study on faith. In our last session, we talked about um, believe in God. Just believe in God. Today, uh, the title of our message is God Said It. God said it. And so we are going to open up in prayer, but we're going to start off kind of in the same chapter that we left off in, and that's in Romans chapter 4. And so you can go ahead and open your Bibles or your electronic device to Romans chapter 4. Make sure you have a pen, paper, and a highlighter to take notes. And in Romans chapter 4, we're going to start off um, by looking at... Um, verse 18. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, we say thank you. Thank you for your word that is life. We know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know that you look over your word to perform it. So Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to trust you today, to have ears to hear what your word is saying to us, what your Holy Spirit is teaching us. Help us to apply it to our life, to hide your word in our heart, to let it dwell in us richly, that we will be changed from the inside out. That Father, we will go forth as new creatures in Christ Jesus, walking in newness of life in the steps that you have ordered on the path that you have directed. So we surrender all and ask that you would take over and have your way in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Romans chapter four, verse 18. We had talked in our last session about Abraham. We talked about him believing God and how it was counted unto him as righteousness, right? And so today um, we're starting off. This verse is still talking about Abraham, but it says in verse 18, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be, right? So this is telling us that he believed, you know, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. There was no um, no proof. There was no evidence. There was nothing that he could see, only that he could believe what God said to him what God had spoken to him, right? Because it was according to that which was spoken, right? And so this is what we have to remember is that God will tell us things or tell us to do things and there's no evidence. There's nothing we can see in the natural because for Abraham to be 75 years old and God promised him to be the father of many nations, the father of a great nation, he gives this promise, right? But Abram doesn't even have a child yet and he's old and Sarah's old and they keep waiting and waiting, but he keeps trusting and he believes God at what God spoke. He believes God can bring it to pass. And so no matter what it looks like, it can look like God has told you this big, great thing is going to happen or some door is going to open or some transformation is going to take place and you see no evidence. And it seems like you're waiting and you're trusting and you still see no evidence. It's like you see nothing, nothing's happening, nothing's changing, but you just keep believing and you stand on that word. Why? Because God said it, because God spoke it, because God cannot lie. Right. And so um, it's trusting in what God says. So look with me, look in Luke um, chapter one, Luke chapter one. It's what he says. Whatever the Lord says, whatever the Lord promised, whatever it is, we stand on that. We hold on to his word. We don't allow distractions to make us un, uh, disbelieve. We don't allow what we see in the natural to cause us not to believe. We don't allow people's opinions, advice, or what they think about our situation or circumstance. We don't allow that to cause us to stagger at God's promises, to waver. Think about if 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 Abram and Sarah were were now um you know living in these times and she was going to the doctor and you know and the doctor was telling her, you can't have kids you've been barren all this time you you know you're not fertile you can't have kids and you know many times people just keep believing what people are saying and what it's looking like and what the doctor's report says but sometimes you have to look back and you have to talk to God. And when God speaks to you, you have to believe what he says, no matter what. Here it is. Sarah has never had children. 
She's been barren. And now she gets all the way up to, she does not have this child till she's 99 years old. Somewhere in the 80s, somewhere in the 90s, somewhere in the 70s, she had to, like, if she was now, they would have told her, you got to do this, you got to do this treatment, you got to do that, you got to go through this. Because it's so much being fed through the world and through the wisdom of man that it gives little place to faith if we don't listen and stay in the presence of God. And so in Luke chapter one, we're reminded when uh, Gabrielle uh, makes a visit to Mary and tells Mary, you're going to have a son. You're going to have a child. You're going to conceive. Right. And she had never been with the man. She was engaged. Um to Joseph and the angel tells her, you know, this is what's going to happen, right? And you're going to have a son. He's going to be great in the sight of the Lord. Um, you know, or, or I'm sorry, hold on. Wait a minute. Let me get to the verse. I'm sitting up here just reading random, right? And then that was for um, Elizabeth, um, for Zachariah and Elizabeth. Um, but here to Mary, when Gabrielle comes to her in verse 26 of Luke chapter 1, um, he lets her know that she's going to have a son, right? And he tells her um, that she's blessed among women in verse 29. When, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, fear not for you have found favor with God. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Now, her question is, after he tells them how great he's going to be, uh, he's going to be the son of the highest. Um, you know, he's going to reign um, over the house of Jacob forever as kingdom of we know in. Her question in verse 34, how shall this be seeing I know not a man. I haven't been with a man. How can I conceive? How can I have a son? The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, is what the angel tells her. This is something you cannot see. You cannot imagine. It doesn't make sense in the natural. Verse 35, the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Right? And then in verse 37, it says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And here's what Mary says in verse 38. Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. This was the message from the Lord to Mary. Mary believed it. She believed it. She said, according to thy word, she believed it. She trusted Right. And so this is the thing. According. Can you just say according to your word, Lord, according to your promise, according to your word, God, whether it's instruction, whether it's a promise, whether it's a command, whether whatever it is, whatever God tells us, whatever's in his word, whatever he says to us individually, whatever the Holy Spirit guides us to just trust him at his word. I don't know how you're going to work it out. I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't see nothing. Don't make no sense to me. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to trust you anyway. I'm going to believe you anyway. I'm not going to stagger. I'm not going to waver. Right? Look in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, we're reminded Jesus is, you know, out. he's teaching in two ships, right? One of them was Simon's, Simon Peter, right? And so the Bible tells us um, uh, after he was it tells us in verse three, he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down, he taught the people out of the ship, right? And then it goes on to tell us when he left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought, right? So here we go. Um, Jesus gives instruction to Peter. Now, Peter is a fisherman. He's been out fishing all night. He didn't catch anything. Jesus tells him, go out into the deep and launch your net for a drought. Hold on one second. Because this is listening to the word of God. When you ain't did that, nothing happened. He's been out all night. He's a fisherman. That's what he does. He knows how to fish. 
right? And so, but the thing is, is you're being told to go back and do something that you tried to do and it didn't work. You, you, you tried it. You've been up toiling. You've been working. You've been trying hard to accomplish something, to do something. It didn't work. It didn't happen. It wasn't fruitful. It wasn't beneficial. So you're like, you know, I'm tired. I didn't try to do this all yesterday. I tried to do this all last week. It didn't work. It didn't happen. And then the Lord tells you to do what you just did. Do you trust him enough to do it again, to try it again? You feel like you're skilled at this. You know how to do it. It didn't work. But would you still go out and do what he says? Because when you look at this word for um, drought in this verse of scripture, when he says, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a drought. This word is agra in the Greek, A-G-R-A. And it means for a catch. It's hunting or a catch. So he's telling him, go out there and catch some fish. It means the catch or haul of fish. It means fish. Fish is taken. This is the definition of this word. The thing caught, it means the catch or the haul of fish. It means the fish is taken. So he's saying, launch out into the deep, let down your net and catch the fish. Just that simple. Simon answers and says, Master, I toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Just because you said it. Doesn't matter what already happened. This is what happened in the natural. This is what happened. I know what happened, but I'm not, I'm going to disregard what happened because at your word, I'm going to do what you said. I'm going to disregard what it looks like in the natural and I'm going to hold on to your word. If you say do this and go out there, he didn't just tell him to go out there in the deep and let down your net. He said, go out in the deep, launch out into the deep, let down your net for a drought to catch fish. And the Bible goes on to tell us when they did this, it was such a great multitude of fish that their net broke and they had to call their partners, which were in the other ships, that they would come and help them. And they filled both the ships and they began to sink. That's how many he caught. Why? Because he believed the word. And so, do you believe God's word? Do you believe what he says? The same thing with Abraham. Abraham believed, right? And what he couldn't see, didn't have a son. They were old, but he kept believing. And the promise, when the, the children of Israel were birthed through him, the nation of Israel, when, when we, you know, are saved and become, you know, engrafted into that family. Listen, there is, there is, he didn't see it in the natural. He just believed it. He didn't see it in the natural. He just believed it. He did see the birth of his son. He did see that take place. But the great nations, he didn't see it. He believed it. And in his faith and believing God's word, it affected generations to come. Generations, generations, generations. Do you believe God's word enough that you can affect the generations to come? Believe and have faith. Because what? God said it. Those three words. We're going to close out in prayer. Go back and meditate on Luke 1 um, uh, and Luke 5 and uh, go back and, and look at Romans chapter 4. You know, we went over it, but I want you to, to just meditate on it and just remember those, those verses that's specifically talking about Abraham and his faith because it will be counted as righteousness. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, we say thank you. Thank you for your word, for your truth, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us what we stand in need of, that we can grow in your word and in faith and progress in the walk that you have set before us and the purposes that you have for us. And so we thank you for truth. We thank you for spiritual nourishment. And Father, we thank you for spiritual honor armor, spiritual weapons, that we can be spiritually minded, led by your Holy Spirit, walking in purpose. We give you all praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. Don't forget to join us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our master's class on my Facebook Live, Instagram Live, Tony Brook Brown. Also on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the master's class on my social media. So God bless you, and I will see you on our next sit-ups. It's time for sit-ups, I'll sit up.